how do we get and help that when people have become privatized and their idolatry of radical or individual autonomy has gone, you know, in fuego, it's just become on fire yeah. that they don't want to be a part of the institution because they're fearful of it. How do we help recapture the institutional part in order for the communal identity of catechesis to occur? This, this is so hard. I mentioned this at the very beginning about how how is the modern world different from the early Christian world, the pre-Constitutional world? And one of the things is I mentioned both. On the one hand, we've had 1600 years of Christendom in the West, which has been both good and bad. So in some ways, one, we are dealing with uh, many of the abuse, much of the abuse and the sin that has happened at the hands of those who have had ecclesial power and institutions that have not always Christian institutions that have not always performed in virtuous ways. So one thing I mentioned this beginning, one thing is we are now living in a world in which we sort of have to acknowledge, we have to acknowledge some of those things. Simultaneously, this is like a Tom Holland dominion mm -hmm. where the church has done some incredible things and institutions created by the church have done some magnanimous, incredible godly work. So we're often trying to struggle with those. And I mentioned in one chapter on the intellectual life, like trying to deal with current institutions or create institution. And I say, it's gonna be some kind of both and. I think one challenge we have that I don't really get into in the book is with the loss of some institutions, like, like say a university or a college or something. There are people who have invested their lives in that, Christians who have now lost that institution, who now have to deal with the, the fallout and redirect energies. That, that's a challenge. This is where pastoral work comes in. Uh, th this is where the good work of, of, of helping people grieve the loss of maybe one institution, the recreation of another institution, another educational institution, for example. But that kind of sifting work is going to be challenged. I think one, at least one way forward is, a, is an emphasis on localism. And I do mention this in the book, that one way to overcome sort of what technology is doing is re-emphasizing, as you said, membership and gathering people together uh, on, on a regular basis. I mean, the last thing is people want to go to another church business meeting, but uh <laughs> but creating creating liturgies and habits of getting people together and Eating growing together God. hospitality yes These basic things yeah it's not that hard it's pass people over to your house to eat for crying out loud <laughs> growing together in godliness and you know getting off our phones and getting getting to church together and up in pastoral staff that will lead people in hospitality, that will create leaders, um, leaders that are creating, that are not using, I mean, this is one of the challenge. I, I can't remember if I mentioned this book, I read a piece, Christian leaders uh, that are using their positions, not as platforms, but as servants, as creating environments where people are are gathered together in learning hospitality. I mean, I think, I think we need godly leaders, pastors that are kind of leading the charge and creating cultures within our churches and cultures within institutions where servant and hospitality are the orientations, not at the expense of godliness and of Christian orthodoxy and Christian morality, but but doing so in ways that are that are Christ-like and servant-hearted. I, I mean, I think the, creating those kinds of cultures in our churches is, is imperative. I think it has to go beyond the pragmatic centralization aspect in certain respects, that it has to go back as you, into the home, localization, hospitality, 